Every ocean is mysterious and deep in its own way. But compared to the Mariana Trench, they look like the shallow end of a pool. Found in the Western Pacific Ocean, it's the deepest part located in any ocean, at least 36,070 feet deep. Although it's not easy to discover new stuff at those depths, we inevitably do. 15 Shocking Things Recently Discovered in the Mariana Trench Long-nosed chimera Commonly known as long-nosed chimeras, the rhino chimera day are a family of cartilaginous fish. They've been around for quite a long time. However, there aren't too many species. Only eight are known. They have an elongated, smooth body, beak-shaped teeth in both jaws, enormous pectoral fins, a triangular dorsal fin with a venomous spine used to defend itself, a second dorsal fin, and an exceptionally conical snout. The snout has a lot of sensory nerve endings and is used to find food like small fish. The tip of the clasper is vastly inflated to form a fleshy, elongated knob covered with multifaceted leaf-shaped spines, which are arranged one after the other along its dorsomedial margin. The long-nosed chimera can be found at the bottom of the continental slope or abyssal plain in tropical and temperate regions worldwide. They're usually found deep, deep down in the ocean, as in 660 to 6,500 feet deep. A long-nosed chimera was brought up from 2,700 feet off Newfoundland's Grand Banks sometime in August 2020. Roughly, they're a maximum length of 2 to 4.6 feet, depending on the species. Watching the sea animal swim is so satisfying. It's almost as if it flies with its fins in the water. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What they captured in Mariana Trench shocked the whole world. Classic Xenomorphs, an extraterrestrial originating from the planet Xenomorph Prime, one of the deadliest and most hostile of all known alien species. These creatures require a host organism in order to reproduce, and their appearance can vary depending on the host in which the embryo is implanted. The human phenotype is generally around 7 to 9 feet in height and roughly 400 to 600 pounds in weight, with a long, muscular tail and large, curved, oblong head. The queen of this species is generally twice as large and possesses superior speed, strength, and intelligence compared to her common offspring. Problem is, as you've probably figured out, they're not real. So what are they doing in the trench? The xenomorph is a fictional extraterrestrial species that serves as the title antagonist of the Alien film series. The species made its debut in the film Alien in 1979 and appeared in the sequels. So, what are they doing here at the bottom of the ocean? Your most outrageous ideas only! Leave them in the comments below with hashtag Sweet Topic. USS Johnston in 2019, the remains of the USS Johnston, a 115-meter-long U.S. Navy destroyer that sank in 1944, was discovered for the first time. The warship was sunk by the Japanese Navy during the Battle of Samar on October 25, 1944. 186 men died out of the 327 crew members on the ship, including the captain, Commander Ernest Evans was given a posthumous Medal of Honor. Victor Vescovo, the founder of the Caledon Oceanic, a private company that focuses on ocean expeditions, led the expedition of surveying and filming the destroyer ship. Vescovo is a former U.S. Navy commander, but that's probably the least of his accomplishments when you compare it to his world record for being the first person on the planet to have been to the top of all the world's continents and the bottom of all its oceans. Pretty incredible, right? According to him, the ship number 557 was still visible on both sides. There were also two gun turrets right where they were supposed to be. In his reports, he shared that the turrets were pointing in the right direction, the direction he believed they were in, as they continued to fire at the enemies before the ship went down. The expedition team didn't find any human remains or pieces of clothing. That's understandable because there sure are thousands of human-eating creatures down there, and we're talking about an accident that happened 78 years ago. The discovery of the USS Johnston is a reminder of the sacrifice and bravery of those that died that day in the Gulf. Chondrocladia To find the liar sponge, you must go 10,000 feet into the ocean. 
The Chondrocladia lyra is a carnivorous deep-sea sponge discovered for the first time 10,800 to 11,500 feet in the Northeast Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Northern California. The sea creature is called the lyre or harp sponge because of its basic harp-shaped structure known as the vein. Each of its veins consists of a horizontal branch supporting various vertical branches. The harp sponge may look all new and cute and harmless, but it's a sea predator. If you happen to be 10,000 feet into the Pacific Ocean, avoid it. It anchors itself to the soft and muddy floor of the sea with its root-like structure called a rhizoid. It captures prey that drifts past it in its deep sea currents by snaring it with its veins covered in velcro-like hooks and spines. Since it's a carnivore, it feeds on copepods and other crustaceans. Once the hooks entrap the prey, the sponge secretes a digestive membrane that engulfs the captivated target, breaking it down till the liar's sponge can suck it up through its pores. In 2013, it was on the list of the top 10 new species discovered in 2012. It made it to the list out of 140 nominated species. <laughs> Solmesis jellyfish The Solmesis jellyfish is a jelly like none you've ever seen. It's also called the dinner plate jellyfish. It belongs to the genus Solmesis, and its nickname is gotten from its flat-shaped bell, which is open upwards. They actively hunt their prey instead of chilling out and waiting for food to pass by. The dinner plate jellyfish feeds on other jellyfish, copepods, doliolids, and cetinophores. They're most likely found midwater, 2,300 to 3,300 feet in Monterey Bay. They can grow up to eight inches in diameter, now, there's limited information about the dinner plate jellyfish because of their limited number. Once someone made a comment saying they have never noted a jellyfish of this particular build, it's no surprise since we're talking about almost 4,000 feet below the water surface. Scientists find new animals there all the time. That's why this video exists. Mariana Sailfish This is the deepest fish that's been collected from the ocean floor were the words of Mackenzie Geringer, the lead author of a paper on discovering the Mariana snailfish species. Its scientific name is after a navigator on the 19th century expedition that discovered the Mariana Trench, Herbert Swire. The Mariana sailfish looks like ghosts of the abyss, smooth-skinned, wispy and pinkish white. They're the deepest fish ever brought out from the Mariana Trench. Geringer was a PhD student at the University of Hawaii Manoa conducting research as a member of an international team when 36 of these specimens were collected in 2014. Want to know how deep they were in the sea? 22,600 and 26,135 feet! Geringer and his team used free-falling traps with mackerels as bait to catch the fish. Since then, researchers have sighted Mariana snailfish swimming at 26,716 feet in video footage. This is the deepest sighting for now. These snailfish are the king predators in the depths of the Mariana Trench. They're free of predators and can just roam or swim around freely. They live off tiny crustaceans, shrimp, and the numerous invertebrate prey down there, which they suck into their mouths. This snailfish might not be very robust, but it's never hungry and lives a very happy life in the deep sea. <laughs> blob Sculpin The Blob Sculpin is not the most aesthetically pleasing fish, but who cares what you look like when you live 9,186 feet deep in the permanent darkness of the sea. It has a broad and flattened head, a pink amorphous face, big and widely distanced eyes, a drooping nose, and turned down lips. The Blobfish always looks depressed, their huge head and most parts of their body are covered in small spine-like cirri. The body of a blob sculpin is small and tadpole-like in comparison to its gigantic head, decorated with large pectoral fins, one on each side. This species can be found deep down in the North Pacific Ocean by the coasts of the Bering Sea, Japan, and California. Now, there's an explanation for the sad, mucousy face of the blobfish. You can simply say it's suffering from barotrauma. This refers to a physical trauma due to the rapidly changing environmental pressure levels. If we live where the blob scoping does, in the deep darkness of the North Pacific, we would be crushed flat. We wouldn't even survive. The deeper you go into the ocean, the more the Earth's atmosphere exerts pounds of pressure on your body's surface. Meaning the deeper you go, the more pressure your lungs, cells, 
proteins and whole body endures. Now imagine what it's like for the blobfish whose home is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. <coughs> Fanfen Sea Devil The Fanfen Sea Devil is a very strange looking deep sea creature from the anglerfish family. This fish can be distinguished from other anglerfish because it lacks the escal bulb, which is the bioluminescent lure that comes out of the top of its head. The Fanfen Sea Devil has a round body and fan or whisker like dorsal and anal fins. It's almost entirely black, which makes it very hard to spot in the dark depths of the ocean. The Fanfen Sea Devil is way bigger than her male counterpart. On the south slope of Sao George Island in the Azores, in the North Atlantic Ocean, a camera caught the pair drifting slowly and gracefully in the pitch black sea. The male was parasitically attached to her belly and it took about 25 minutes for the researchers to figure that out. It was a mesmerizing scene. Deep sea anglerfish lure their prey in the ink black darkness 16,400 feet in the ocean using the bioluminescent fishing instrument on the top of their snout. This is where the angler and anglerfish comes from. Because of their massive teeth filled mouth and their expandable stomach, they can capture and, in single gulps, devour prey way larger than themselves. Trust us, you don't want to be anywhere near the Fanfan Sea Devil. <coughs> headless Chicken Monster Where the Headless Chicken Monster lives is two and a half times deeper than the depths the most powerful submarine can go. It was found 9,900 feet below the surface, off the coast of Antarctica, southwest of Australia. It's also been found in the Gulf of Mexico. The Headless Chicken Monster is a kind of deep sea cucumber. No, we're not talking about the vegetable. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms. The dictionary defines an echinoderm as an animal of the phylum Echinodermata, comprising radially symmetric, spiny-skinned marine animals such as sea urchins and starfish. The headless chicken monster falls under this category because of its ability to swim with its wing-like fins, feed on tiny particles like algae, and dwell on the ocean floor. It has a semi-transparent, jelly-like, barrel-shaped reddish body so that you can see its internal organs. It's a bioluminescent and can create and emit light. But that's not as cool as its ability to glow in the dark. Its scientific name translates to mean dreamer. It's no surprise because watching this creature move in the dark feels like a beautiful, peaceful dream. The headless chicken monster has no bones and its body is lighter than water. So there's a natural buoyancy in the animal. It floats effortlessly, just inches above the seafloor, living its best life. <laughs> Metallic Sound In 2014, scientists solved the 50-year-old mysterious bio-duck sound, often recorded in the Southern Ocean, when they figured Antarctic mink whales were producing it. Now there's another mystery of a creepy audio recording from the deepest part of the ocean, picked up by the autonomous seafaring robots known as passive acoustic ocean gliders, which can dive up to 3,200 feet deep in the Mariana Trench. The eerie three and a half second recording spans frequencies as low as 38 hertz and as high as 8,000 hertz. Scientists send these robots out to eavesdrop on whale conversations. Sadly, they couldn't understand this one the sound does not resemble noise produced by ships or the sounds from geographical sources like earthquakes, wind, or ice. Some researchers identified the alien sound as similar to the mink whale, Star Wars call. Hence, they believe it comes from the same type of animal. Mink whales belong to the larger class of baleen whales. They're characterized by their baleen mouth plates, which they use to filter small fish from seawater. The dwarf mink whales make a sound called boings. The low-frequency moaning of this mystery sound is so similar to the boings that it's been nicknamed the Western Pacific Biotwang. However, boing is a mating call and is mainly heard during the winter. The Western Pacific Biotwang, on the other hand, is heard throughout the year, so we're still puzzled about what the sound is. <laughs> Zombie Worms Osidax, also known as bone worms or zombie worms, are one to three inches long worms that feed on bones. Yeah, you heard that right. The name zombie worms was inspired by their habit of boring into the body remains of dead whales. They were first discovered in 2002 by a group of researchers studying the depths of Monterey Bay, California. The worms had been feeding on the carcass of a gray whale. Once scientists knew that zombie worms existed, they began to look for them more. 
They drugged the carcasses of whales and other dead animals and sank them to the bottom of the ocean. They then waited for months and years before dragging them out. Crazy, right? Since their first discovery, over 15 species of the worm have been discovered. Here's something even crazier. Zombie worms don't have mouths or teeth or even stomachs. They feed by secreting an acid that liquefies the bones to reveal fats that they digest with symbiotic bacteria. It's a very strange process. The most absurd fact about zombie worms is that only females do the drilling. The microscopic males are smaller and live in harems inside of the female's mucus tube, meaning they live inside their bodies. This makes mating really easy for them since the eggs and sperm are right next to each other. Once, 111 males were found inside one female zombie worm. Sea pigs The fact that sea pigs, or scotoplanes, are common in the deep sea floor, 3,300 to 19,500 feet off Monterey Bay, doesn't make them any less mysterious. They were first discovered 100 years ago and earned their name from their inflated legs and chubby, oval-shaped, pinkish bodies. They have five to seven pairs of enlarged tube feet. The sea pig is a type of sea cucumber. They use their stilt-like tube feet to suspend their bodies above the soft mud, navigating their habitat. The mud is very important for their survival because they extract organic particles from it. They use their sense of smell to find fresh and rich food sources that come down from the water surface. They feed on sources such as whale corpses. As we mentioned before, sea pigs are mysterious animals. One puzzling thing about them is that sometimes they give rides to hitchhiking juvenile king crabs without any apparent benefit to the sea pigs. So scientists wonder, why? Sea pigs don't really enjoy each other's company, but they're sometimes found in large gatherings because they tend to gather where food resources are surplus. So if there's a whale carcass on the seafloor, expect to see hundreds of sea pigs around. <coughs> Deep sea hatchetfish. We have another bioluminescent animal on this list, the hatchetfish. The sea creature was born ready. With its large eyes pointing upwards and pelvic bones tilted downwards, the hatchetfish is prepared for whatever food or danger comes its way. But its gaping, frowning mouth and wide eyes freeze the face of the hatchetfish in a permanent surprise, as though in preparation for a downfall in the mouth of a predator. Another remarkable fact about them is they're camouflaged. Thanks to bioluminescence, they have light-producing organs, called photophores, and rows on their bellies. They can regulate the color and intensity of light from the organs to the light filtering from down. This process is called counter-illumination. In plain words, it makes the hatchet fish almost invisible from predators below. They're very mysterious creatures. Not much is known about their life cycle or lifespan. Researchers believe they don't live longer than a year. They also know that the juvenile hatchet fish looks very different from the adult. Researchers also believe that, at night, the hatchetfish migrate to shallower waters to feed on ostracods, crustaceans, copepods, and plankton. During the day, they return to their home 4,500 feet in the blackness of the deep ocean. <coughs> Gopher eel Gopher eels, also known as pelican eels, have a similar lifespan to humans. They can live up to 85 years. They're the most unusual animals you'll find in the sea. The gopher eel has a long, narrow body that moves in a wave-like motion through the water, back and forth. These eels come from a family of 800 different species. Now, the gopher eel doesn't have attractive colors to make it stand out from the rest. You might even think it's the black sheep because of its black color and tiny length of just two to three feet. But the unusual creature has something awesome up its sleeves that distinguishes it from its 799 family members. They're called gulper eels because of their huge gulping mouths, which is larger than their bodies. Hence the other moniker, umbrella mouth gulper. Their mouths can open wide to swallow animals much larger than themselves. It helps that they have expandable stomachs to accommodate the large prey. However, despite all of this, the gulper eel's diet consists of small crustaceans, squid, and seaweed. Scientists believe they go after larger fish if food is hard to find. We hope so too. We don't want that large mouth to go to waste. It has to be used for something. Alicella gigantea The Alicella gigantea is the largest species of amphipod ever discovered. In comparison to other amphipods, the Alicella gigantea grows at a faster rate. 
The first specimens were collected at the end of the 19th century. Since then, specimens have been found in abyssal plains in the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Southwest Pacific. Amphipods are one of the most important groups of crustaceans in the ocean. They're very distinctive in that they contain no carapace, but their bodies are divided up into 13 individually shelled segments. Because of its size, it's called the supergiant. The first time the supergiants were seen was in 1897 off Canary Island by a man named Chevro. We wonder what he thought when he saw the two male amphipods. We may never find out. What we do know is that he gave them the name Alicella gigantea. After that, they weren't seen for over a hundred years until the 1970s when several potential ones were photographed on the deep sea floor. By 1986, there were 16 specimens. The largest was 13.4 inches, and that was how the supergiant name was born. Apart from the fact that they're 20 times the size of other amphipods, supergiants are extremely rare. Giant Amoeba Researchers from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego and National Geographic Engineers went on a voyage to the Pacific Ocean in July 2011, where they deployed drop cams equipped with lights and digital video to explore the mysterious parts of the deep sea. They found the deepest known existence of single-celled animals called xenophyophores, which can only be found in deep sea environments. Xenophyophores are sponge-like animals that, just like amoebas, are made up of just one cell. We can just call the xenophyophores giant amoebas because of their size. They have an average length of 4 inches. They were found 35,000 feet deep. They're likely resistant to large doses of heavy metals. They can concentrate high levels of uranium, mercury, and lead by trapping particles from the water. Also, they were made to be inhabitants of the deep sea and nowhere else. They suited the life of low temperature and darkness. They're also known for their abundance on the seafloor. These giant amoebas play host to diverse multicellular organisms, hence why scientists say their identification opens up a whole new habitat for additional study of biodiversity and environment adaption. Don't you wonder how many creatures exist down there that we don't know about? Well, let's leave it to the scientists. We trust them to keep looking, as you can trust us to let you know when they find anything new.